Welcome to Holy Ghost Christian Center, Newark, New Jersey. The house of stars, a place of refuge. Experience the power of God to change the world. Please sit back and enjoy God's word for you today. up your holy name for who you are in our life for your purpose and for your plan we thank you for bringing us to the end of this year we thank you it is you that have been on our side it is you that have been our strength it is you that have been our buckler it is you that have been our fight and our defense Lord we lift up our voices today oh Lord and we say you are worthy to be praised Jehovah we pray this morning that you will breathe on us again you will energize our spirit you will cause a change in our heart. You will cause a change in our life. We will never remain the same again. Lord, we thank you because you are worthy to be praised. Be thou exalted, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say a louder amen. Let the church say a louder amen. Thank you very much. Give a clapping offering to the Lord this morning. Look someone beside you. Tell the person you are welcome this morning. Tell the person, I am glad to have you beside me this morning. And I, I really want to thank the church this morning for giving us the privilege to be your pastor. You know, it is a privilege. Um, not by right, but it is a privilege. Because there's a, there's a lot of thousands of churches around that you can go. But you enable us to be your pastor. We really want to appreciate you. And all the leadership of this ministry also appreciates you. The Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Tell somebody I am blessed already. And um, today is the third week of our topic we're talking about to break poverty, to move into a wealthy place. Tell somebody I am going into a wealthy place. Our Bible base, I'm going to be fast this morning so that I can finish on time. Our Bible base is Psalm 66 verse 12. It says, you've caused men to ride over us and we've passed through fire and water, but you brought us into a wealthy place. You brought us into a wealthy place. To come to a wealthy place is not a joke. It's not by mouth. It's not what you just think about. It's what you work on. Tell somebody, work on it. Say that to yourself, work on it. So now I'm entitling this message this morning. Enforce your way into a wealthy place. Enforce your way. Enforce your way. Don't wait for anybody. Don't wait for church to lay hands on you. Don't wait for the government to give you direction. You can enforce your way into a wealthy place. I've discovered with my little time and little age that many people wait for people to lift them up. Whereas you've forgotten that the people you are waiting on just want you to remain where you are. There are people you are looking up to that never pray for you to rise. There are people that just wait for you to be looking up to them alone. And... In you expecting them to lift you up, you are going nowhere. Because they expect you to remain where you are. They expect you to remain the same. But can you tell yourself, I will not remain the same? Say that to yourself, I will never remain the same. Say that to yourself, I will never remain to say the same. There's a Bible verse that I love to quote. It's the book of Proverbs chapter 10 verse 15. Proverbs 10 verse 15. I want you to listen very well this morning. He said, the rich man's wealth... Is a strong city. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. Many times, you look some people, they are brilliant, have knowledge, have good advice. But because of the status of who they are as poor, people will not receive it. Most of the time, they will receive it, but they will not recognize them. That the one that gave the advice. How can we say that is the poor man they gave the rich man advice? They won't. I was expecting Naaman when he got back to that land to call all the city and celebrate that. It is this housemaid that gave me my victory. Do you know they never recognized that lady? She is still housemaid in the same house. The only thing they increase is food. And the level of food change. But I want you to believe this morning that you can break from stagnation to progress. 
When we're talking about wealthy place, it's not talking about money alone. It's talking about your spiritual life. It's talking about your relationship with God. It talks about where God wants you to be as a person. Let us create human beings so that they can have dominion. They can be like us. The book of Ephesians 2 says, you are seated in high places. God ate it when you are below. Tell somebody I will never be below. Say that to yourself, I will never be below. Now, breaking the backbone of poverty, uh, there are three major ways to break the circle of poverty. Three major ways. It has not changed. God started it, and men took it over. Whosoever is able to tap into it, we break through. There are three ways, and it is investment. Do you know God invests in you? Do you just think Jesus came to the world for nothing? No. He created you fine, but devil came to mess it up. But I have to invest or invest in man. I have to gain them back. Do you know how many churches we have today? Do you know how many people praying today? In some churches, there are thousands. Reinvestment. And that reinvestment has to cost him something. It's not a joke. He has to send his only begotten son to die. Only begotten son to die for you. So that he can regain you back to him. And there's a lot of things for him also. Bible said, because he has agreed to do that, God said, I will lift up your name above every other name. Anytime you desire to break from the level you are to the next level, there is a reward for you. If you fail to break, it's okay. I told you, you it doesn't matter if you struggle, you can still go to heaven. Now, poverty doesn't make you to go to hell. The only thing, if you are not careful, it can cause you to be lying and see affect you to get to hell. But if you poor and you are stand fast in God, you will get to heaven. That has nothing to do with heaven. But God wants you to enjoy on heart. Tell somebody that we enjoy on heart. And the reason why I'm so interested in you to be wealthy is for us to depopulate the kingdom of hell. Now, if we don't have money, we, we can't go on TV. Only few Christians, churches can be on TVs. They have the message to the world. They can preach the word. They can evangelize. That can help the poor. Do you know the people we call philanthropy don't even give church money? They are looking for those that HIV and tuberculosis are killing. Are you getting it? They should help them. They will be doing it till Jesus will come. But there are some news. Say, well, how will they hear if there is no preacher? And do you know preacher will not just eat bone. We don't work anymore. We fly. If we have to go with ship to London today, how many days will it cost us? Actually, it's going to take us three weeks to go with flying boats like the one they normally, they normally crash in the, the other, those, those ones you normally go with. They didn't get to its destination. They have to bring it back. Take you like two and a half weeks. The second way to break poverty is real estate or land. Talking about money, so don't, don't, be, don't get angry. Uh, the last one is business. That's somebody business. Uh, if you look at the circle of poverty, media people, uh, let me to pray for the media. God will help them. They are not bringing what I to give to them. It's okay. Uh, but if, if we look at the poverty circle, there's a picture I want them to show you. I think they are they are struggling with it. No, I need my circle of poverty. Circle of poverty. Praise the Lord. Um, if you look what surround poverty, one of the things that surround poverty, we have ignorance, very powerful thing. Ignorance. Powerful circle. Ignorance. I want you to look at that circle. And they are back to back. Ignorance. Ignorance of what to do. Ignorance of your health. Ignorance of how to make money. Ignorance of how to manage money. Ignorance of, I asked a question last two week Wednesday. How many people know the amount they are making every month or every week? Only few people are able to raise their hands that this is the amount that I'm making every week. I ask people how many know how much they are spending every two weeks. Only few people, like three people know how much they are spending every three weeks. If you don't know the amount that you are spending, how will you be able to manage the money? If you don't know how to budget yourself, how will you be able to create wealth? You see, another thing that creates poverty within poverty is disease. Are you getting disease? It's not when you're sick in your body, in your mind, your spirit. 
As I'm speaking now, some of you, you detest what I'm talking about. You still think we're going to hell as we're talking about this thing. Listen, I've told you several times. God talks about money 2,000 times in the word of God. Jesus, for those three and a half years, 2,000 times, talk about money. And so focus on it. Someone was contributing money one day, and he focused on the people that are giving money. If it's now, people will say that, your pastor, renew your mind. Say, out of every one of you, is only this woman. God wants you to prosper. Uh, apathy. You know the word apathy means? Now, what will be, will be. They don't care. Uh, my father is poor. Why, why should I be rich? That is why some people, they, no matter how you are lifting them up, they must come down. Even though you are showing them the way, they will tell you, my friend did it, it didn't work. They will see the people that have done it that never work. It's apathy. They don't care. They are so comfortable with Lazarus' spirit. You know Lazarus' spirit? He said he desired the crumb that fall from the table of the rich man. If anything go wrong, there is a soup center around. <laughs> soup center. We go to a soup center. Okay. They said it's kitchen again. <laughs> if it's kitchen, it's supposed to be eating meat. But the soup they are serving. And again, there is a thrift shop. Use clothes where you can buy. So people don't bother. They say if it's hard, I will go to thrift shop, buy $2 clothes. And the last thing, I will go to Walmart. I'm not saying anything funny now, but I want you to begin to think how you are taking your life. Because many of us have been doing this and we are 10 years in this place, 20 years in this place. What will be, will be. The education you brought from your village is still the same. You are upgrading and you've never changed. You've used 10, 6 years doing one course. Apathy, and you don't care. You will postpone. You will defy the admission. Let me work for this year. You defy the admission. Let me work for this year. And after 4 years, you defy admission 5 times. And you are still doing the same thing. And many times we pray, Lord, devil is attacking my income. No, it's not devil. You are the one attacking your income. Because you can't keep on doing the same thing and expect a change. And we've caused God, we make God a liar. Lord, Holy Spirit, do it, do it, do it, do it. Lift me up. Lift me. Why is he lifting you to? When you are not changing, you, we can't lift you anywhere. Where is he taking you to? Your mind, your heart have not changed. Another the thing, funny thing is dependency. Many of us love to depend on people. This is a major thing that can cause poverty in a community, in a family. Dishonesty. If I ask many of you, I'm not, I've not robbed anybody, but you've robbed God. Dishonesty. God said, let me bless you. But he said, God, you know that that money is too much. Uh, how will I give it? Let me just give them some. And I will show the remaining as a suit. I will bless the homeless baby. <laughs> I will bless homeless baby. Your tithe is $200. You bless homeless baby with $20. God sees my heart. You pay that of $2. God said that I'm doing it. Dishonesty. Dis or dishonest unfaithfulness to God. Now we're looking at ignorance, having a lack of information or lack of knowledge. I've been running fast on it. Apart, I've explained that to you. It's when people do not care or when they feel so powerless that they do not try to change things, to write, to turn things around. They just believe that what will be, will be. Uh, dishonest diversion. Not being faithful. Dependency. Just receiving from charity. Receiving from people. Receiving from people. Receiving from people. Not ready to give. I was raising funds for Atlanta. People did not give. One said, Pastor, the one I have is not enough. When you don't give, another one cannot come in. Why do we call Red Sea a smelling sea? Because only receive, never give out. This thing are pure, are real. Stop over spiritualizing things. Money doesn't come to your hand because you pray. Money comes to your hand because you follow the principle and pray. Are you getting it? The Bible said there are four channels of blessing that enter into the garden of Eden. God knows what he's saying. You must have channels of blessing that comes into your life. Not by folding hands. Um, someone said something. He said, if opportunity does not knock, build a door and keep on knocking it. Keep on knocking the door by yourself. Uh, nothing determine a man who is determined to succeed. I want to be determined to succeed in 2014. Succeed in your marriage. Succeed in your business. Succeed as a person. Succeed as a child of God. I'll be saying some things very careful this morning. You see, 
world or life make way for the man who boldly push past everybody? The moment you take a step, life will make a way for you. Provision only is available to those that have vision. So if you don't have the vision, there's no way it can come. Let me, let me, sound, this, let me sound this note very well. Let me say this very carefully. When I'm talking about wealthy or money or to, be, to come to your wealthy place, be very careful. Because the primary thing first is for you to know God. If you are wealthy and you don't know God, you are going to hell. I, I, I don't normally say people going to hell, but let me say this. Because if you are wealthy, it will be hard for you to satisfy God. It will be hard for you to please God. Many of you know it. That if 10,000 come to your hand, to pay tithe of 1,000 will be hard for you. Now talk if God should bless you with 1 million. I was calculating something. I was talking to is it Minister Victor. And it looked like almost 3 million. I said, how do you pay tithe of this? 3 million. is 300 what? I said, Lord, 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 help me. <laughs> Many of you don't believe it. It is real. I'm, ju I'm just using myself as an example. It is real. But if you can't pay tithe of 1,000, how will you pay tithe of 3 million? The first thing you need to do first is to know God. I'm not, ju I'm not just saying this to make you happy. I want you to get, to get provoked in your spirit and do it. See what the Bible, the word of the Lord said in Psalm Isaiah 43. He said, Isaiah 43 verse 18, and I said, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Listen, 2014, 214, the Lord will do a new thing. He says something very powerful. Not it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? And we even make a way in the wilderness and river in the desert. Do you know what that Bible means? Where you don't even think of, God can raise business for you. Where your eyes is not seen, God can raise. But the first thing, you must know God. You must appreciate God. You must understand God. Listen, if you must force yourself into a wealthy place, you must be prepared to take unusual steps that many people are taking. For you must know that it's God that I've given you the power to make wealth. Are you getting it? You must know that it's God that is ready to bless you as well. To have a new life in 2014, we must detach ourselves from our old circle. Detach yourself from your what? Old circle. How many people have budgets in this place? Only few people. And you are praying Holy Spirit. Only few people have budget. How many people have salary they are giving them? Apart from the salary the company is giving you. You are giving yourself salary. Fine. Only few people also. You must have money you are giving yourself. They, give, they are paying you 20000 every month. You must give yourself, maybe you are giving yourself 500 every month from it. And if you have to spend exceeding that money, you must think very well. The only thing that must take money from you is God. If it's not God, what you are not supposed to buy, you should not buy it. So you must be ready what, to detach yourself from your what? Your old circle. If you know you are a spender, fight it. If you know you can't save, fight it. It's an old nature that have kept you where you are. If you know that it's hard for you to save, fight it. It will not be easy. It's not an overnight stuff. You must fight it. From the failure we have experienced last year, you must fight it. If you must experience new thing in 2014, you must what? Fight it. You must what? Fight it. Tell somebody fight it. Listen, the children of Israel were held down for 40 years. How many years? At a spot without any progress. I don't know how long you have been here. I've been here now for 13 years plus. But I don't know how long you have been here. You know, some people have been here for 37 years. I was looking into problem in the Bible, sir. I find that there are some people that if, if they, were, they were showing up their, their problem. Jehoiakim was in, arrested for how many years? That? 37 years. That man at the bedside, how many years? Are? 38 years. That woman that just was, woman, she said, this woman is a daughter of what? For how many years? 18 years. That woman of issue of blood, for how many years? Tw not one year among those years. Not one year. So if your year is going to three, four, five, six, that means you need to fight and detach yourself. I was saying something. Bartimeo knew that Jesus was around. He said, Jesus, deliver me. 
Deliver me from my problem. People told him, you are okay the way you are. We are giving you one, one dollar. Is it not okay? And we give you food. But the man cannot see. The man cannot see far. Even white people are dressing him up with anything. The man cannot see. Have you noticed that when you are blind, there is a limit to what you can do? The man will tell them, I need white shirts for this money. To show people that I also have white shirts. Has hasn't he make money? People give him money every day. And he said, buy me white shirts. But you know what they will do? They will buy the white shirt. But we will give him the used one they have. Since he's not the one that will buy it by himself. He can't see. Can you see? But the man said, Lord, deliver me. And Jesus asked him. I would have said, Jesus would have said, oh, you cannot see. You cannot see. See. Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? A man that is blind. Don't you see that he's blind? Now, many of you do this. Don't God know that I'm struggling? God knows that you are strong, but God knows that if he gives you strong blessing also, you won't know how to use it. They were doing the statistics and they find that those people that have won lotto or lottery, do you call it lottery? God bless you. Someone just won, some people just won a lot of lottery now in Atlanta. I'm doing, when I got there on Friday, you should share my own to me. They find that after five years to six years and they bring them back, they all go back poor. They go back to the level of what poverty because they cannot handle it. You see, you must have a capacity to break from where you are. Tell somebody, I am moving forward. Say that to yourself, I am moving forward. Listen, most of them we're talking about in the land of Israel died where they are in the wilderness, but you will not die on your own. So how can I enforce myself into a wealthy place? How can I enforce myself into a wealthy place? Um, before it's too late, you need to do that. Before you do what? Tell somebody it will not be too late for me. Say that it will not be too late for me. Number one. You must understand your right as a child of God. Understand your what? You must understand your right as a child of God. For you to detach yourself from your old place and come to the new place. You are no longer a poor person. Jesus has carried it. Are you getting it? And you must understand that you are now a child of God. Not in spirit alone, but in deed. You must begin to act as someone that is blessed. So when they are calling blessed people, don't let them be caressing you before you rise up. In your mind, begin to see it. Or is it reading about the, the, the largest church in the whole world, Yonggi Cho? And he said in his mind, he saw 2,000. His wife saying that we are only seven in this church. He said, no, we are 2,000. In his mind, he told him, he said, I've, I dream I saw 50,000. There are over 1 million members. They start Sunday service from Saturday. From where? And in your mind. They start from Saturday. Begin to see the big thing that you want to become. Understand your right as a child of God. Who are you in Christ? Who are you? Are you a child of God? If you're a child of God, you will do his will. You will obey him. You will walk in his covenant. We've talked about the practical thing that you have budget. You, you don't allow, you don't spend more than your income. But most important thing, you must know who you are in God. You are a royal priesthood. You are a chosen generation. You must consciously begin to talk about it that I will never be poor. I cannot be poor. I carry God's in me. You see, that affects everything that you do as a child of God. When money becomes things that affected you, that makes you not to love God, you are in trouble. You are in trouble. If there's anything, because that is what God wants to prove in that of Abraham. He said, give me the best that you have. And the best of money, of course, is our money. The best of you is your money. Money of you don't pay tight, it's your best. But God told Abraham, give me your best. The only one that you have. And he gave it to God. So anything that is hard for you to give to God, it will never last in your hand. It will never what? Last in your hand. So you must know this. Even though you are a child of God, all what you have, your soul, belongs to God. Don't think like people in the world. You are a child of God. You are a joint heir with Jesus Christ. You have been redeemed and forgiven. Know that you are seated in high places with him. So your financial life also must change. Your thinking pattern must change. The way you see things must change. The way you look at things must change. 
You see, nothing changed in the year. You are the one that needs to change. And begin to plan it now. We have some... How many days left for this year to be over? Just four days. I'm ready for 2014 already. You see, your right or ability to exercise the authority of God over your life is not automatic. It's not what? Because you are coming to church does not mean your situation will change. Have you noticed that? Some people have been in church for 30 years, but they still remain the same. But you have to be in agreement with him that owns the power and authority in all his heart. In the school of wisdom, this morning they were saying something very powerful. What type of gate are you? What type of door are you? You are not concerned about so. You are not concerned about praying for people. Many of us only pray for ourselves. Lord, kill the witch in your household. You've been killing them all this while they are still alive. Don't you think you need to change your prayer point? That Lord, let me start praying for people that are having problems. Let me start lifting people up. Let me start helping other people. You must agree with God. Tell somebody agree with God. Say to yourself, agree with God. You must work it out. Work it out. Many of you don't like to sow seed. I was talking to a man of God recently. They just have assistant pastor. He said he doesn't like when they call for seed. So I told them they should get him a branch to go and pastor. So they got him a branch to go and pastor in Staten Island. And on the first week, no tithes, no offering. The second week, no tithes, no offering. He said it's not biblical. So when they came to the senior pastor, he said, no, it's your branch. We set you up. Sponsor it. Do you think it's by prayer we, we raise this place and we pay for your hall that you are? We pay 1002 for that hall for three months for you. Um, those people that are paying it are here. They are contributing. You also do your own there. He said, how will I do it? Ah, go and think about it. So the man told him, we give you only one week. Or two weeks to think about it. You see, any time you don't sow seed, you must not expect harvest. Genesis said it. Listen, I'm not saying this so that you can give me money. Don't give it. But it's a principle. God works by principle. Many of you are jealous of the mayor of New York. He has been a mayor for 12 years now. The man is taking $1. Do you think it's a joke? All his money said is given to people. Sowing seed. The man only have only one daughter. That one also did not marry. So nobody will be running after the money. They said the man worth 17 billion. I'm just giving analysis for you to think right of your life. My first message in 2013 is that if you are not born with a silver spoon, get a spoon and put it in your mouth. What am I saying? Start building your word. What did I say? Agree with God. Agree with God is not prayer. Many of you, let them pour anointing oil on your hair will not do anything. It's not about anointing oil. Sow seed. The hand of a giver is always on top. Sow seed. Jesus, God sow seed. Jesus died for you. Who do you die for? You might not be able to die physically, but your finances can die for the work of God. Your time can die for the work of God. Your intellectual, your, your, your knowledge can die. Stand in the gap for people. Agree with God. God wants to bless you. Come, let us make man in our own image. Simply means you must have the mind of God also in you. What is number two thing you must do? If you must enforce yourself into a worthy place, must be desperate for a new life. Tell somebody new life. Say that to a new life. Listen, I, I'm, not, I'm not pulling anybody down, but I want to say this. This is church. I want you to be blessed. I'm serious. You to be blessed. Um, this is simple thing. There's a law in forces or in, first, in physics. They say there's an initial law of, what do you call it, of motion that says that a body will always be at rest until another force come and what um, compel it or push it to move forward. If I don't take this basket away from here, it will remain here till tomorrow. But if I want to cause a change, I can lift it up. Change is position. It's in one position, but I can also do something. I can lift it up and so also bring it up here. This is another position. You must determine and be desperate for a new life, a new level. If your life is full of sin before, be desperate to live only for God. 
If you have struggled before, be desperate not to struggle in 2014. Someone said, Pastor, what will I do? I've been working all this work. I've been working all through all this way. Uh -huh. That is why uh, I'm suggesting to you, don't get mad. <laughs> How many people think saving is easy? It's not. But do you know one thing? Many of you that are working for people, many people have 401k. Let me see you, you have 401k. Many people are using it. Many people are only taking the four one k or you had to it. You had to it. So if they are giving you four one k, go and read that paper again. If your company said they can give you five percent in uh, what they call, they can match it. Match it. Put ten percent. You see, the ten percent will not affect your salary. Check your salary. It's before tax. You won't feel it at all. But now wait for four months and see that money that they are taking. Because they are matching it. That's one way to be rich. Are you getting it? It's not always good. Uh, but the other one, force yourself to start saving. To start what? You pay tight. Start paying tight to yourself also. It is very important. No matter how money, how big the money is co that comes to my hand, I take two tights. Tight for church and tight for myself. Tight is a different level to you. My own tight is 20% of my income if I have it. Uh, if it's twenty percent, you are paying. So you take twenty percent and twenty percent from that. Pastor, someone said, Pastor, it will not be enough. It will only affect you for the first time. After that first time, if you are determined to do it, you break through it. May I say this to you now? May I say this to you? If you are saving fifty fifty dollar from your paycheck every time for six months, do you know how much that will be? Do you know how that will be? The only way to 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 break those things desperately. Is to do it with force. Don't have pity on yourself. Start saving. Budget. You might not have. Drink, Gary. Force yourself to do it. And break poverty. Be desperate. Tell somebody to be desperate. Tell yourself be desperate. Nothing good come easy. Jesus also was desperate. Do you know that? Bible said he saw the punishment. He told God, let this call. Pass over me. But he remembered that if I can endure it, my name will be higher than everybody. That is a result. He said, I will give you a name above every. It is you have to endure. Be desperate. Tell somebody, I will not be poor. Say that to yourself, I will not be poor. If not, you'll be getting angry at those that are rich. It is normal. It's not, it is normal. It is normal. It's not anything. It is normal. You get angry when they talk. Because the way people that are rich talk is different. The way they see things is different. The way they look at things is different. The way they handle things are different. Now, I'm bringing you to a new level now. Please. If you have been used to struggling all your life, it affects your mental reasoning. Change your mind. Many people have seen one million this year. One million dollar. Amen. I love that, man. I love that man. That's good. <laughs> I love that. He's online. <laughs> Tell somebody I need it in my hand. <laughs> Tell somebody I need it in my mind. Listen to me. See what the book of Mark chapter 9 verse 17 and 18 said. I'll be, de I'll be grinding up soon. And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son which had a dumb spirit. <laughs> and whoever, whosoever he taketh him, he tears him down. And he foam and gnashed with his teeth and pined away. And I speak to thy disciple, but they have not been able to help me. And they could not help me. But do you know what the man now did? The man cried out desperately to Jesus Christ. He said, cried out. And when Jesus saw that the multitude came running together, I'm reading another one, rebuked the unclean spirit, saying unto him, thou dumb and deaf spirit, I command thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. The Bible said, immediately that spirit never enter anymore. Listen to me. If you must change anything, you must be desperate. The man cried out desperately with tears. He needs help. He cried for help. Cry for help. Look for people that can help you. I told people that I do susu. I do susu. Do anything you can do. Just to break the circle. Break what? 
When you are not big, don't be fooling yourself. Don't be what? If it's twenty dollars, you can be doing susu. Do susu. Isu, would you call it susu? <laughs> if you like, don't don't hear me. <laughs> eh? Okay, susu. They said they don't know the meaning of susu. Okay. <laughs> susu is uh, people that gather themselves together, contribute ten dollar, two dollar, and they are saving it for you. In a month, someone will take it. If we are 10 in that $20, 20 times 40, how much is that? 20 times 40, don't worry. <laughs> 20 times 40, how much is that? 800. Eight, 20 times 40, how much is it? If you don't know calculation, how will you be able to calculate the money? <laughs> if that's hard, do you know that that $20 is in your hand every day you spend it? But if that 800 add to what you are planning on, don't you know it's a huge amount of money? It is. Some of you, you throw Cora away. I went to wash car somewhere there, and they were throwing Cora, and I bent and was packed, picking it. I'm serious. And I packed $3 from the floor. I was packed. I'm serious. In that place, behind the Dunkin' Donut, if they throw it away, so I was picking it. If you have to be rich, you don't waste money. Don't waste resources. In all my car, I put Cora, and I know when they take it, and I will talk. Because I monitor where I put things. Anything you are not conscious about can never last in your hand. Please, it is very important. What we are doing, we want to break poverty in our life. Your grandfather cannot be poor, and you also, you are poor. And your children should not be poor. Many of you, you are working hard. Work hard with work hard smartly and with God. That's money I will break through. How can you force yourself into a worthy place by faith? Say somebody by faith. by faith. Now, doing all those things require faith. You need to do it by faith. Uh, Jesus was answering them in the book of Mark, chapter 9, verse 19. He said, And he answered them and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I be here with you? Bring him up. How long will I tell you that everything is possible? You see, anything that you've seen in the world that people have heard, you also can hear it. Nothing is new. Whosoever is a millionaire today didn't get there by automatic. Uh, they can get there by any way, but you have God who controls the wealth of the world. You have God who controls everything. You must have faith in him that he can see you through. In your business, you must have faith in God that can see you through your business. You see, because you fail in business does not mean that's the end of the world. Because your financial life goes down or you lose your job does not mean that's the end of the world. It's just showing you another way to, to bring you up. Bible said he makes all things beautiful in his time. And listen, he can turn your story around if you are in him. He said, if you abide in me, and my words abides in you. You will ask anything and it shall be done unto you. If it abides, if you do it, please learn to do it. Jesus said, my meat is to do the will of him that have sent me. If you must enjoy as just have enjoyed, you must do his meat. The man came on heart, used brand new car. No, Jesus used brand new car. His suit, they were fighting on it. it shows that it was a designer suit. Yeah, it was a designer suit. Bible said when he died, they were fighting on his garment. It was a designer suit. He used brand new car. Tear nylon. Tear nylon. He told them, the odds that no one has ever ride alone. And, and go and tell them, tear it. Release it. No mileage on it. Zero. Let's say point zero zero one because they, they, they took the, the horse to him. And Bible said they, they now... When he was coming, not only rode on floor, people said, people put their clothes on the ground and was riding on it, riding on it, red carpet. Many of you miss you something, and eh? you miss you miss yesterday, Carol. We have red carpet, but they took it away. <laughs> Listen, God is showing us example of who He wants you to be on earth. Have you noticed what the same called Revelation? He said, the floor of where we are going is made with gold. If you have been using fake gold, you will get there, you won't understand. I decide not to use one now, so when I get there, we understand. When I see it, I say, whoa, this is gold. 
This is good. If the floor is good, now talk to me. The food will be eaten. He said in the book of John, he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. If not, I wouldn't have told you. Not just ordinary, a mansion. A mansion. I was imagining mansion for some time now. Mansion. That you have three living rooms. You're stepping from one. There's no house here. Come to my country. Some of you that have never been to Africa. And you will see houses. Houses. In heaven is going to be interesting. But you need to have faith in him. You should not have faith in your education. Not faith in your dollar. Not faith in your account. Have faith in him. Because without him, you can do nothing. If you don't have faith in him, if the money comes, you will mess up. Somebody will not mess up. Say that to yourself. Not mess up. Um, Faith don't just come like that. Faith means believing God. Faith means obeying God. When we say somebody should have faith in God, means you must obey God. Uh, what, is the, what is the use of God instructing you? And you are not obeying. And you are expecting a result. He told you this morning, before you go out, kneel down and pray for two minutes. He said, Father, if I get into the car, and you get into the car, you are going. What have you done? You've disobeyed already. That prayer is waste. That means you didn't have faith in God. Faith is not just believing God. Faith, Bible said, devil believed God. And he's shivery. When devil stand and he hear the name of God, he's afraid. Those of you, because you are used to it, in the name of Jesus. No, we are praying. So some of you just put your hand in the body. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. The Bible said, the righteous run into that name and they are saved. They mentioned that name. Bible said the ground open. Have you, have you heard? His blood only touched ground. Bible said those that have died begin to raise up. There is power in him, but obeying God or having faith in God is not just believing. You must obey his word. Obey what God is saying to you. Obey him blindly. What did I say? Some of you are not yet blind to God. I've shared this with us. Wall of Jericho, Bible said it was so wide that five chariots or six chariots can rode on it easily. But he told them, if you have to do it by your strength, nothing will happen. But the only thing I want you to do, just walk around the wall. Don't, don't mind the stress. Walk around the wall. Don't say anything. On the seventh day, just shout. On the seventh day, just shout. It's an instruction. Your car have manner. Most African people, when you buy a car, you don't read your manual. No manual. You won't read. On the something happened. Where did they put the key? The key was page 22, page 24. No manual. White man have known for long. This is your hyper. There is manual that came with it. Your wristwatch alone. If you buy a good one, not the one they put on the, if you buy the one that have box, there are lots of manual in it. They copied that from God. Copied that from God. Your manual is the word of God. You won't read it. You came late for the school of wisdom. You know now you can't raise your hand to, to ask me a question. Because Osha will say, not now. That is why we want to have <laughs> cell, as fellowship. So I'll be able to grow. That's somebody I will grow. Say like that to yourself, I will grow. But you must agree with God. Obey God's instruction. That's somebody who obeys instruction. In 2014 that you are going, we have a few days left. From Wednesday, we are starting seven days fasting and prayer. Someone said it's a Christmas day. The Christmas we've been doing last year. What's the difference? This one is fasting. That's somebody fasting. We want to pray. That's what we want to pray. I must be wealthy. My life must turn around. What is the next one? I have to, three minutes more. Prayer and fasting. Tell somebody prayer and fasting. That's why we're starting that on Wednesday. So that we want to back up what we want to do with prayer. We want to back our movement to where the place with what? With prayer and fasting. Listen, someone said, just God is not so wicked. Why do we have to fast for seven days? The one you want to pray to that you are praying to every day, fast there for 40 days and 40 nights without eating anything. The man did not plan for fasting. You know? Bible said he was going for baptism. They want to baptize, baptize him. As, as they are, Bible said a voice came from heaven. This is the one I love. And Bible said the spirit of the Lord led him. Don't go back home. Go to the wilderness streets. And from there, I didn't go back home. Go there for 40 days and, and pray. Listen, um, it's not a joke. 
Bible said, Jesus said, without fasting and prayer, there are some things we never change in your life. Listen, may I explain that to you? If your foundation is struggling, is full of problem, you need prayer to pull yourself out from that mud. Have you ever been pulling people out from the mud before? It's not easy. You need fasting for you to be able to rise. There are some people, they are not in the mud. Don't copy them. Some people are standing on strong ground before. Their parents have been praying for them for a long time. Their father, their mother have been praying. Some of you are praying for your children. They won't go through what you go through. They will not because they will have their own problem, but it won't be like your own. That they have to pull. So that is why you need to pray so that I'm fast, so that you can pull, they can pull you out from the mud. Are you getting it? Jesus pray. Whoever heard about the family of Joseph before? But he came through Mary. Mary have a foundation before. Are you getting it? The assignment is coming to do on heart so that it will not be destroyed. Jesus, God said, he led him. Why didn't God lead him when he was 25 years old? But the moment he began to, he came for baptism. And he's so unique. Everybody was just going. But when he was going, he was praying, Lord, speak to me. Do a new thing. He must not be ordinary. And there was a voice. This morning, the voice of the Lord will come to you. Even as it's coming to you, you will obey it. So fasting and prayer, starting from Wednesday. Tell somebody it's on Wednesday. Don't run from church. Say like that to that person. Don't run from church. Don't go for party. If anybody invites you for party, tell them this Wednesday till the end of the year is prayer. Tell somebody it's prayer. Some of you are not desperate enough. Bible said Jesus was desperate enough. He was praying the guy don't get mine. And the, the sweat that was coming out from him Look like he want to survive. Who want to die? He, told, Let, he saw how they will beat him. How many people have had a dream that masquerade is pursuing you in your dream? They've not beat you, you, they pursue you, and you are sweating. Say, God, Pastor, Pastor, they are, they, are, they, are, they are all around me. You are now alive, they are not there. Who is God? Saw so how they will beat him. And he said, Oh, one of my people is going to disappoint me. Show me to the enemy. I pray today, any power that I've held you down, you are breaking from it. Lastly, 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 by sacrifice. Tell somebody by sacrifice. If you must break from poverty, it's by sacrifice. Jesus break it by sacrifice. Solomon break it by sacrifice. Abraham break it by sacrifice. Look at the giant in the Bible, break it by sacrifice. It's only by sacrifice. By sacrifice. When God knew that what he created, devil messed things up. The first thing God did for uh, to have access to the Garden of Eden is to shed blood first. Sacrifice. Shed blood. That is why I said the only way to do this is to bring Jesus Christ to die for us. Shed blood cross. Are you ready to break poverty? Break struggling? And step into a wealthy place? You must enforce it. Tell somebody I must enforce it. There is power in you already. Rise up on your feet this morning. 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 I have three prayer points we're going to pray. And I want you to pray. Please, there's no Jelenke prayer. And I want you to pray with all your strength now. Yeah. Pray with all your strength. This is individual prayer. You, you, you know your own battle. You know your what? If you don't know your battle, that, that's too bad. Because if you don't know you are going through battle, it will be hard for you to be delivered. I know my battle, and I'm fighting it. In any opportunity I have to fight it, I must fight it. Not on yourself alone, but on your children as well. But before you start fighting a battle and praying for divine force, power that will push you to a worthy place, your life must be right with God. You can pour a new wine into an hunter and hold wine. If your life is not right with God and you still allow anything to bring you down, to weaken your spirit, that means you are not grown, you are not yet strong in the Lord. And God doesn't want you to remain this, He wants you to be strong. If you are here in the, in the service this morning and you know you need to rededicate your life to Christ, you need to give yourself to Christ again, you need to surrender yourself to Him again because, listen, without Him you can do nothing. And separating yourself from Him, it will only add more problem to it. It cannot touch you. You are just a branch. If you separate yourself, you'll be drying up gradually. You know, not the day you separate yourself that you dry up. 
It's a gradual process. It can take 10 years. And to reactivate water back to you or to graft you back requires some strength. You are here this morning. Don't look at anybody. It's you and your life. Because your life must turn around. And you want to rededicate yourself to get say, Lord, I need you back. Breathe on me again. Fresh anointing. Lay hands on me again. I need your second touch. I'm here this morning. I'm not looking at anybody, but I need you this morning. Come forward.